Hey, Quasi Mojo back here on Mojo Radio, and we just heard Bedside Radio and Drive It In from Crocus. Something old, something new. Mark Storacci's voice sounds as good as ever, and now that I'm done kissing his ass, we have him on the line right now, all the way from his home in Switzerland. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm fine, Quasi Mojo. <laughs> good to be talking to you again. Absolutely, and uh, we spoke a couple of months ago for Metalholic Magazine, and you guys, uh, you know, the album had just come out, you were working on a new video, in which we'll talk about, but the big thing that was on your schedule, and one of the things that I want to talk about early on is, you guys were going to be doing a massive show in your home country there in Switzerland in Bern with uh, ACDC, 42,000 uh-huh. fans, tell us about the experience. Well, <laughs> We were thrown in at the deep end, uh, I would say, <laughs> with uh, um, no sound check and straight onto the huge stage in front of an audience of forty thousand. Like that's that's huge for uh, for Switzerland. Forty thousand people is like ten times the size of the Holland Stadium. It was open air. And, uh, well, we just went for it. You know, we gave it all we had. Um, we, we played into the setting sun, so, so we had the sunlight in our eyes. And, uh, of course, uh, this didn't do very good for the light show. But um, we got through with spirit and, and Crocus uh, attitude and Crocus songs, you know. And we had a great time, although it, time was short. And uh, we realized that there were loads of our own fans out there, you know, Crocus and ACDC fans too. And um, it was great. And uh, I guess we we did a great job at um, getting the temperature at the right level before ACDC uh, uh, eventually came on, you know. I know over the years, for reasons I still can't fathom, you've sort of been equated to an ACDC type band but to me they're more of a garage band your your guys' songs are a little bit more uh thought out not so you know <laughs> flat yeah, yeah well 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 a- ACDC is a rock and roll boogie band uh based on blues and rock and we we're, we're based on blues and rock and we have some boogie in there too so i guess when uh, kids hear the boogie songs like a la um Bad Boys, Ragdolls, Heat Strokes, or as even something more monumental by Crocus, uh, Long Stick Goes Boom, then um, we get compared slightly to, to ACDC. But as you said, we have a wider spectrum of music than that, and we write songs ACDC uh, but don't, uh, don't go that far. We... we we spread our wings a little bit more, <laughs> and that's that's why we come, came out with a, uh, our strongest song still till today is the ballad "Screaming in the Night." That's the most requested song that we get here at Mojo Radio from the Crocus catalogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seems to be a worldwide thing, then. <laughs> seems, seems to be uh, <laughs> from way back from the 80s, from uh, 1983. It was our top album, The Headhunter, and. Um, Screaming in the Night was also a video which hit MTV and was on full uh, rotation. Uh, that means it got played at least four to six times a day in those days. And we charted number 24 with Headhunter, and uh, we were part of the biggest package tour uh, on on the USA roads uh, for that year, 1983 together with Def Leppard, with their album Pyromania. And number one, there was Mr. Michael Jackson, you know, doing the moonwalk and uh, Thriller, selling his Thriller albums. Yeah, 1983, I mean, was just a huge year. I I just spoke the other day with uh, Carlos Cavazzo, who at the time was in Quiet Riot and is now in another band who was really huge that year with you guys, too, in Rat. And we were sort of talking about that. I think that might have been sort of the pinnacle year in the 80s for for heavy metal. I think so. And uh, after that, um, the the figures started to change for everybody, and uh, the whole scene slowly uh, started, uh, well, the wave lost its um, <laughs> power, kind of. 
you know, and in 1988, we we called it a, a day and took a hiatus, you know. Well, and a lot of the bands from that era, yourselves included, as I just mentioned, Rat, um, have re- have released new albums now. I mean, you guys you guys have been recording throughout the years, off and on, but the new albums that are coming out um, by some of these iconic bands from from that era, including your new one, your 16th album, Hoodoo, just really recreate that vibe that you had back then. Number one, if you could tell everybody, how did you go about getting the original lineup back together? And then how did you guys go about putting this new album together and recreating that vibe from that era? Well, first of all, um, I was out on the road um, at the time when uh, my manager called me and he said that Swiss Television wanted to have the original lineup uh, of Metal Rendezvous. Metal Rendezvous was my debut album with Crocus in uh, 1980. 30 years. And, um, yeah. So um, I was on the road uh, promoting the Hellraiser album still with uh, the bunch of new guys around me, uh, including Mandy Meyer, who had toured with us in 1982. And... Um, so I had to make a quick decision, and uh, I thought it was good for Crocus in general to uh, do this three-minute medley on Swiss television, and it went down a bomb. So, uh, you know, the press, the media went nuts, and, and it was a great feeling as well for myself to be back with the boys for, even for such a short a time and to, uh, you know, play this, this short medley from Metal Rendezvous. So one thing followed the other, and, you know, soon it became, became a reality, you know, and we got back together uh, after I suggested that we have a jam, and the jam san- sounded like, you know, a real uh, turn-on. It was really like uh, replugging back into 1982, because it was the deformation of 1982 that is back together now. And um, it was great, you know, being back together with uh, Fred and Mark and Chris and Fernando in one room, jamming out the old repertoire. And um, then we gave the reunion concert of 2008, which was in the Stade de Suisse in Bern, same place we just opened for ACDC, for 40,000 people. And, uh, yeah, we, we sold out that uh that stadium too um and we had a not only a great time but it it justified that um we really did you know i had done the right thing taken the right decision to go back with the old boys right and uh you know so one thing follows another and the next thing we were talking about uh writing an album writing new songs together um which turned out to be really great ecstatic because um here we have the same songwriters again that that wrote uh, long stick goes boom bad boys rag dolls screaming in the night and you know the headhunter album uh, so it, i mean with being together with chris and fernando and and with me together we formed the triangle songwriting partnership <laughs> if you like uh the chemistry was back and um we really had a great time and we were focused on recapturing uh the old spirit you know and we didn't know what was going to come out of it but um we started to see that our efforts are being fruitful you know uh, so every time we had four songs ready we went into the studio and recorded them and we paid attention to record analog because we wanted to we wanted the songs we wanted the whole album to sound big like in the 80s so uh, we were very careful we used a normal analog uh, top top class uh, you know state of the art um desk and uh, in the end, we only mixed on Pro Tools, you know, because that's the fastest and uh, the most, uh, it's it's the best way. I mean, there's nothing better than Pro Tools to speeden up 
the whole process uh, and uh, get the mix done with less stress.